Dr. I. Addison Zhang, Digital Learning Consultant, and she'll be speaking about live streaming in 2019 and beyond, what marketers need to know. Please make her welcome. Yes. So there are three key objectives I want you to take away from my talk today. The first one is to really understand the growing influence and the impact of live streaming. But it looks like many of you in the live audience, in the audience here are already familiar with uh, live streaming. So the second objective is I want to show you how some brands and marketers, they are leveraging live streaming to grow their business and to grow their brand. And this, the last one is I really want to inspire you, everyone in the live audience, to go live and to really embrace this and to really understand why live streaming is so popular. And uh, it is because live streaming is a great way to humanize who we are as brands, as consumers, and also to be more authentic in our digital storytelling. And you are going to hear me to say this word, authenticity, being authentic uh, in my talk today. And uh, I know that uh, Terry already introduced myself. Next slide, please. And uh, I just want to kind of add more personal touch to be more authentic in my storytelling. And uh, I originally grew up in China, and I came to the United States in my early 20s to study. And I got my MA and my PhD from two different universities in the United States. And uh, so I have been teaching about communication and social media, digital media in the United States since 2004. And uh, two years ago, we relocated from South Korea. So this is where the South Korea connection comes. So for this trip, I flew from Korea. And uh, outside of what I do, being, then being a college professor, I'm also a live streamer. I'm a personal branding coach. I actually developed a 3C system to help people build a strong personal brand, which I'm going to discuss uh, tomorrow at my workshop. I'm also a speaker. I'm also the founder of Classroom Without Walls. So this is pretty much how I travel nowadays. My backpack and my, my live streaming equipment. So the first part of my talk, I really want to show you guys the growing influence of live streaming. And uh, how many of you have heard of this an app called Blab? So Blab is actually launched in 2015. It's a live video service feature. And this is really the early stage of live streaming. And uh, at the time uh, when Blab was really popular, they had within one year, they had almost 4 million users, and I was an early adopter of Blab. And uh, if you can go to the next uh, slide, you can see this is how this thing looks like. So four people being on screen at the same time, that was my very first interaction with live streaming to understand how technology is collapsing time and space how you can use this little thing to communicate and to create content with people literally from all over the globe. So that was Blab. And uh, to really engage in this collaborative storytelling and content creation. But unfortunately, Blab was dead after a year. <laughs> so the next one is Meerkat. How many of you heard of Meerkat? Good, good. So Meerkat was really, really popular a few years ago uh, when Meerkat was just launched. And I think it was in 2000, uh, can you go to the next? Yes. And uh, that's the, the Meerkat, that's how it looks like on the computer screen. It was first launched in 2015 at the South by Southwest Conference in the United States. And this app has also become really popular then shut down in 2016. 
And so how many of you know that guy? What's his name? Yeah, do you guys love him? On fire all the time, right? I love him. So he is also an early adopter of Meerkat. And here are some other live streaming features like YouTube, Twitch, Upstream, and a bunch of others. And uh, so here, and I also want to show you some of the really popular live streaming apps in China. And there are just a bunch of them. And uh, next slide, please. And there are more live stream, pretty much all the social media platforms in China. And they have their own live streaming feature. And I want to show you this and uh, to show you how popular live streaming and uh, social media and uh, like uh, apps are in China. So this is actually a street vendor. As you can see, it's not fancy at all. But did you see the circle, yellow highlight? It is a QR code. So even a street vendor selling newspaper, and this is also another fun, not fancy at all, um, where they sell pancake, traditional Chinese pancake. You see that I highlight again, QR code. So it's, it's really, really popular. Like renting bicycles and QR code is everywhere. And the next one is really funny. And uh, I actually saw this, even like homeless people, beggars on the street, they don't get cash. They don't want cash from you. They like give me a QR code and that's how they collect money. Isn't that funny? I actually saw that. And uh, so like, Within the United States and globally speaking in countries like China, video apps, live streaming content have become more and more popular. And according to this really uh, big study conducted by Cisco Visual Networking Index, 82% of the internet traffic will be video content. Listen to that, video content, 82%. That is huge. And 100 million internet users watch online video. And uh, for me, I, that's how I consume content. And this one's really interesting. And uh, traditionally, a few years ago, right, TV is really dominating. But slowly, as you can see from this chart, that more and more advertisers, they are really investing in digital ad. Right, so TV is losing popularity, and then, and in a few years, uh, to 2022, and people are going to spend more and more money uh, doing digital. So what we can learn from this chart is, digital is taking over, and the live streaming, live video content is taking over. And here, specifically uh, in terms of more live streaming content that I want you guys to know, especially if you are a digital marketer, small business owner, you are still not sure about this live streaming content. It's not even the future, it is the now. So live video content is outpacing many other types of social media content, such as video or post. It's more appealing to the audience. And uh, as you can see from the numbers here, 80% of consumers, they prefer to watch live video content compared to other types of content. And uh, at the same time, you know, how many of you are selling product or services online? Okay, good. So if you are doing that, you should absolutely embrace live streaming even more. As you can see from the numbers here, after people watch certain live streaming content from you regarding your product or services, they are more likely to purchase from you. So that is the power. That's what we want to do, right? The reason we use social media is not just for fun, right? The reason we are using social media is actually to make some money, to convert, and so live streaming is a great feature to have that conversion. Yeah, as you can see from both, the numbers are very high, the 67%, 55, almost half percent of the people who watch live video content, they are more likely to purchase from you. And uh, as you can see, the number of shares, right? We're always talking about on social media, we have this 
a content shock. How many of you heard of this content shock? What does that mean? So content shock means that on a daily basis, all of us as consumers and as marketers, we are bombarded with content. There's too much content for us to consume. So oftentimes, you are producing content, but the content goes nowhere, right? And uh, so by live video, when you embrace that, your content is more likely to travel from one place to another place. As you can see, live video receives 75% more shares. And that is pretty impressive compared to other ways. So what I'm trying to show you right now is with the numbers and uh, the current state of art of live streaming is video and live streaming content is on fire. And uh, we really need to embrace this. And uh, so the demand is really high, right? The numbers I just showed you, like the conversion rate is high, and people love watching live streaming video. Consumers, they were like, yes, more, more, more. But at the same time, as you can see from this chart, and uh, when you are looking at the gray area here, right, 43% of marketers, that's half of the marketers in this room are not embracing live streaming content. And I got this from the latest social media marketing report, okay? And for this particular report, they interviewed 5,000 uh, social media and digital marketers in the United States, pretty much in the United States. It's a really compelling study, really valid. And as you can see, only like half uh, percentage of the digital marketers, they have embraced social, uh, live streaming. So there is a huge, uh, can you go to the next slide? There is a huge opportunity for us, for everyone sitting in this room to really embrace live streaming and video content to have more conversion, to have more people to purchase from you, to buy from you, to trust you, and to grow your business. So this one is, I, you know, at the beginning I showed you there are some apps that are really popular like Blab, Meerkat, but they all died and, uh, after two years. So in this digital live streaming space, uh, social media apps, they really come and go. That's why you always have to stay updated. You always have to be learning and to uh, go to conferences like this to know what is going on. So this chart is uh, actually from, uh, if you can go back, so that this one is actually data from 2016, so three years ago, like two and a half years ago. And uh, Facebook Live is really popular and uh, followed by YouTube. And then the third one is Snapchat. How many of you guys use Snapchat? And uh, so Snapchat is like kind of losing popularity. And the next one is Periscope. How many of you still use Periscope? Okay. And so that's 2016. And can you go to the next slide? And so now I'm going to show you what are some of the more popular uh, live streaming apps in 2019, three years later after that uh, chart I just showed you. So Facebook Live and YouTube are still very popular. And another one that is gaining popularity and momentum is Instagram. Instagram is hot. How many of you are using Instagram? And Instagram Live? Okay, smaller percentage, yes. I will show you more uh, examples. So next one, please. And Periscope, I have a big uh, question mark here because I feel like uh, Periscope is losing popularity. Fewer and fewer people are using Periscope. And even when I go to conferences, there are fewer sessions talking about Periscope. But there are still people using it, but not as popular as a few years ago. And LinkedIn, this is what I discussed earlier. And uh, LinkedIn live streaming uh, just was just released I think a few months ago, maybe in February or March. 
and uh, it is only available to a small group of people uh, in the globe. Many of them are in the United States, and some of them are outside of the US. But that is kind of uh, linked in life and how it looks like. So now I'm going to take a closer look at some of the major live streaming uh, platforms I just mentioned. So the first one is Facebook Live. Facebook Live is the most popular platform that people use to go live. And here is why. Remember how we are talking about, you know, we are in this stage of content shock. There's too much content, and our content is now going anywhere. How many of you feel frustrated that you spend hours, hours writing this amazing article? but nobody's reading it, right? Can you relate? Or you spend hours producing this really the best graphic. Nobody is sharing this piece of article or graphic. I can definitely relate, right? But with live streaming, the beauty of live streaming is the engagement is really, really high. And uh, for example, live streaming video receives 10 times more comments. And I saw this because I have been hosting a live streaming show for two years. And uh, so when people come to my live streaming show, they don't just listen to me and my guest. They really engage with each other in the live audience. Like people are actually talking to each other. And that is what we call meaningful interaction. And I don't know how many of you really follow Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg. And he actually uh, released a statement that Facebook, the algorithms, they prioritize meaningful interactions. So for live streaming, and when people are really commenting, are really talking about this and engaging with each other, that is a strong signal to Facebook. This piece of content is performing really, really well. And once Facebook receives that signal, they are going to work hard. By they, I mean the algorithms are going to work really hard to boost that piece of content. And uh, also, like for videos, uh, you are also going to receive longer views for live video. People are more likely to stay with you from the beginning of the video to the end of the video. And again, we're talking about organic. Do you even know the organic reach of content on Facebook. Anyone give a guess? The organic reach of content on Facebook. Less than that. Anyone? And I wish I had some prices to give to you. Anyone? It's less than 3%. Less than 1%. One, 1%. Yes, it's 0.1%. And that is pretty depressing, right? That's why I was saying earlier, you, you, you produce this piece of content. It doesn't go anywhere. And that's why where live streaming comes. As you can see from the numbers I have been showing you, like live video content, the engagement is a lot higher because people are engaging with you. And Facebook works harder to promote that piece of content. And so here are just like some screenshots of uh, my own live streaming show. How many of you actually know this guy? That I in this is me, by the way, on the on the right. Hair looks shorter. And uh, that guy, how many of you recognize him? He's actually really, really famous in the United States. And he's also a live streamer. His name is Brian Fenzo. So I interviewed him for my show. I go live on a weekly basis, and I interview leading digital marketers in the field. Most of them are in the United States or uh, in the UK. So as you can see from this video, and the average uh, watch time is here, I highlighted, right? So you can see how many of you actually look at this, actually use analytics to inform you to make better decisions when it comes to live streaming content. OK, good, awesome. So tomorrow during the workshop, I'm going to discuss more of this. But this is really, really important 
you cannot just do social media for fun, right? You really have to understand the overall business purpose, right? Understand your ROI, KPI, all those important indicators, so that you can invest your time and energy strategically. And uh, so for this particular interview, during the lifetime, I had 24 people who joined me live. The engagement rate is very high. And can you click one more time? And because the average view time, watch time for video on Facebook is 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Depressing, right? And, uh, but, but with this one, because this is a live video, the watch time is a lot higher. You see the difference? That's the power of live streaming. That's the power of live streaming. And for this one, I gained a total view of 1.5K, which is not bad. Yeah, uh, next one. So this is where I was talking about using uh, Facebook insights, the analytics. They are actually telling you like how many, pe uh, how many people this particular video reach, and all those numbers you can tell, and the comments, how many. Look, the comments I gained is that like uh, 300 plus comments a lot higher than a post I share on Facebook. Did you start to see the difference? Live streaming content compared to uh, a post, a written post, or even pictures. I rarely, got, I rarely get that many comments if I just post a written post. No, but with live streaming, again, because people are not only listening to you to talk, they're actually interacting with each other. So that is the beauty of uh, live video. And you are engaging and encouraging the community to engage and to participate in this content creation effort. And uh, so for a piece of content like this, when the organic reach is pretty high for this particular interview, and that's where you spend the money to do Facebook ads. You don't just want to do uh, Facebook ads on every single piece of content, unless you have so much money to spend. So if you are a small business owner, and you have a limited budget, and you want to invest in content that is already performing well, and like this one, and then you can boost and you can reach uh, more people. So the, the, the point I want you to really understand is compared to like video, like a pre-recorded video and uh, pictures, a written post, live streaming video has much, much, much higher engagement. As business owners and marketers, that engagement is what we are looking for. Because when people are engaging with you, they are more likely to buy from you. And uh, how many of you actually know Maurice Smith? Oh, you need, guys need to follow her. She is the queen of Facebook. I love, love, love her. She goes live regularly on Facebook. She teaches you everything you need to know about Facebook for free. So this is her method to enhance and improve your organic content on Facebook. Okay, and pay attention, 70% of the content that you share on Facebook has to be video content. And only 10% is written post. How many of you feel like you are already following this formula? That's amazing, that's amazing. If not, we all have some homework to do, okay? And again, I just show you a few quick graphics here. This one is uh, produced by BuzzZumo. And as you can see, the top performing content on Facebook, again, is video. Next one, please. And again, live video content. And uh, so now I'm just showing you some big brands and how they are uh, using their Facebook page to share more video content. 
So this one is New York Times. They frequently go live. I follow them. I watch their live streaming content. I really love them. So see how they created a playlist of different types of content. It's almost like YouTube on Facebook. How many of you actually have a playlist on your Facebook page? If not, you have more homework to do tonight. So you really want to. Like for me, I have a playlist. You know, my live streaming content, or personal branding tips, or Facebook ads. So whatever you discuss, have different categories. Or maybe you are into fashion, or cooking, or healthy living, whatever. You have different categories. It's almost like YouTube, right? And uh, go to the next slide, please. And uh, so another really powerful feature when you are using live streaming content on Facebook is events here. Sure, I don't fall. So events. How many of you are using this feature, Facebook events? OK, more homework tonight. So this is actually really powerful. And you can schedule events that are about to happen. Like for me, I go live on a weekly basis. So I always schedule what is coming up. So when people go to my Facebook page, they know the live streaming shows that are coming up. And you can actually also boost. You can actually do Facebook ads on events which is really, really nice. When you have some big names coming to your show, and you can boost that post, and more people are going to see it. Uh, next, please. So this is another uh, brand that I follow, HubSpot. How many of you know HubSpot? Awesome. Yeah, they have a bunch of uh, certifications. I actually uh, collaborated with them for a social media certification that they did. I wrote a 35-page workbook for them, uh, which is pretty cool. And uh, you can see, they also have a playlist, right? And you can do the same. You interview people in the industry and uh, have different categories. That's how you build your content. You know, in social media, we talk about this uh, formula, which is people have to know you and like you and trust you, right? The know, like, and trust factor. And how can people trust you in this day and age? It's really through sharing content, especially live streaming content. When you share live streaming content, you humanize who you are, and you also invite the audience to be part of this journey, more authentic, more engaging. Okay. So next one. So this is, uh, I want to show you how HubSpot is utilizing, utilizing the events feature. So next, please. And this is my personal page. You see how I use this to schedule uh, most of my live streaming shows. Next one, please. And so here is an example. I don't know if we can show this. And this actually, uh, can you please click? Uh, so this brand is called a Tough Mother. So they do like running, like a kind of sports, that type of thing. So they are hosting this uh, outdoor event. And as they are hosting the event, they decided to go live. So when they went live, they brought, uh, can you click again? So look, look at the numbers. This one gained 66 shares and 54K views. Those are just the live audience. And for this particular one, and they are talking about what the event is about, they are also doing an online registration. So when people are actually watching the live streaming show, there are other people in the comment section and sharing links so people actually register for the event. It works really, really well for this particular one. Can you please click? So I want you to really think, are there like uh, questions or events that you are hosting that you can go live? Or like right now, what you are doing, and people can also go live to show people, you know, they can register for next year. Uh, next one. So here's another example, an Airbnb. Um, they partnered with Disney. Click. And uh, so for this particular one, again, 259 shares. Is that number high to you? Pretty awesome, right? When you think about it, the organic reach on Facebook is less than 1%. But then when you look at this, and then you start to really understand 
what is missing in your Facebook marketing strategy. You really need to embrace more live streaming content. This one is doing pretty well. And uh, so when you are hosting events, I want you to think, OK, so what are some events that my community, my fans, they can benefit, they want to enjoy watching. So not only you and the live audience in person can benefit from this content, but actually also the online audience can also benefit. So this is another one I did. And again, as you can see, the engagement is pretty good, yeah. So this is my formula. When the organic reach is good, then do Facebook ads. And now I, I took a look at uh, the brand, the creative, um, the brand that is hosting the event. I hope you guys don't mind that I use you guys as an example. And I want to show you the power of live video content. And as uh, Erica and I, we were trying to promote this conference. So I interviewed one speaker. Her name is Angela. And as you can see, top video. Which one is the top video? That is my interview. And why? Because my interview, that one is live. And then when you look at other pre-recorded video content, see the difference? Can you see the difference? Look. You can look at numbers. This one, I can't see the numbers clear. It's only one digit, right? But when you look at this, at least three digits. So that's the power of live video. People love that. And you need to embrace. Again, you need to go back to Facebook and look at insights and analytics. And you, I think you will draw similar conclusions. The live video in general, they perform better. And this is hardcore evidence. And uh, next one, how much time do I have left? OK, so Instagram, and uh, as many of you mentioned, I think you really have Facebook and Instagram. Instagram is like the next Facebook, right? And uh, because why? Who owns Instagram, right? It makes sense. They're all part of the big Mark family, right? And uh, this is, again, I'm go, uh, going to show you some of the data from this uh, social media marketing report. And this is actually uh, conducted by Social Media Examiner. Have you ever heard of them? Yes, if not, you should definitely follow them on social media. It is called Social Media Examiner. And they actually go live every Friday on Facebook to share latest uh, updates. Yeah. So you can see this here, right? And uh, this is uh, one paragraph I want to show you from their uh, 2019 social media marketing report. And as you can see, Instagram is hot, right? And 73%. Uh, the numbers are very, very high. If you remember, like a few years ago, Facebook was not this bad. The organic reach on Facebook is not this bad. But recently, because more and more people are producing content, remember content shock? More and more people are producing content on Facebook, which lowers the organic reach. But right now, Instagram is now flooded. It's not flooded with content. And that's why you need to be here as early as possible before it is too late. So here. The commonly used social media platforms. Number one, Facebook. We already discussed. Number two is Instagram. So that shows how great this is, right? And Instagram actually grew more than 50%. That is really, really high. And here, again, shows you the blue color is Instagram. You can see in 2015, Instagram is very low, the percentage, right? And over the past four years, Whew. Instagram is becoming really popular, and Facebook actually decreases in terms of popularity for the first time within the past five years. So if you are smart, if you are a savvy digital marketer, you should really understand this and go and be more active on Instagram. So because I don't have much time left, I'm going to just quickly go over some key features 
on Instagram. And uh, there are some brands that I follow on Instagram that are really good with their uh, stories and Instagram Live. And one of them is Lego. Can you actually click on the page? Because I have a link that can link us to, to the Lego page on Instagram. So I really want to show you how they, if not, no worries, just go to the next slide. Because I watched so many people when they uh, go live or use Instagram stories, there's no human. There's, I don't see anybody. It's just like they, they share a piece of content, but there's no human talking. And the reason you are using Instagram stories is to be more human. It's, it's almost like you are trying to, uh, to, to be more human on Instagram, and then you are using like written content. You don't really show you are using the logo, the written content. There's no human face. So the reason for you to use uh, stories and Instagram Live is to humanize who you are, to show the face behind the logo. And this is another one. I wish I could show you, but it looks like we couldn't click because I had a few videos, but it looks like we couldn't click. Just go to the next slide, please. And this is me. I also want to show you some videos and uh, see how I, the first one is uh, Jamaica Instagram highlights. And I really want you to watch some of my videos, some of the, the Lego videos, uh, Instagram stories to see because we really show, again, the human face. And when you see a human talking, you feel more connected to this person. You don't see this brand just as a brand, but you see this as a human being. And that is an important missing link in social media marketing today because we are not being human enough. And here are some of the interesting features on Instagram. Do you use all of those features? Awesome. Yeah, you same. Because that's the difference. Remember, the written content is just you, one-way communication. When you are using all those features, you are actually inviting the audience to engage with you. And how many of you use IGTV? OK, uh, so this is a look at IGTV. IGTV is almost like a mini uh, YouTube. And uh, um, here are some of the IGTV I did. And uh, you can actually, when you are doing Instagram stories, you can actually link IGTV to your Instagram stories. I just love that. It is pretty cool. Unfortunately, I couldn't show you. The links didn't work. And again, I was looking at the creative brand. And, uh, and uh, if I may say this, just click. I feel like the stories that you guys are doing, again, there are not enough human faces. You want to show human faces, and that's why you are doing Instagram stories, is to humanize who you are, OK? And uh, so here, what I want to show you is, as you can see from my highlight here, so uh, Instagram is also promoting live streaming content. It actually shows up on the top of your home page when you go live, and the algorithms work harder to promote this live content. And this is something really interesting. I want you to pay attention. So here, you know, on Instagram stories, stories actually gain more views than news feed. Do you know that? And uh, here's another thing very interesting. And the more you engage with a person's stories, and the more likely this person's content is going to show up in the news feed. So you can see like the video content stories are definitely a priority for Instagram. So next one is uh, YouTube Live. I probably don't have much time. Can you just like skip this? Oh, this is uh, YouTube is another platform you need to embrace and YouTube Live because think about this. The second largest search engine after Google is actually YouTube. It's pretty awesome. I call this. YouTube University. What's your answer to this question? Do you want your content to show up on Google search results? Yes, right? Give me yes, a strong yes. Yes, right? So to do that, the only thing you need to do is to produce more live video content. And uh, as you can see, I highlighted some here. It's also from another study. 
and uh, you can see the the, the under uh, the uh, blue color highlight here. They promote live video content. Live video content. Okay, really important. And again, so this is a quick Google search: live video content, live video content and more video content. So really start to embrace this. And uh, uh, a few weeks ago, I had the great honor to interview Seth Golden. How many of you know him, Seth Golden, on my live streaming show, which has been amazing. So YouTube is a, a great platform for people to watch replay. Facebook is really good for live interactions, live interactions. But in terms of replay, YouTube is the place for people to watch replay. So just skip this. I, let me just go to the. So oh, just quick. So Twitter, right? We're talking about Twitter and Periscope, and you can see how Twitter, even though it's, the platform is not as popular as before, video content is still performing really well. This is just a quick video I did, gained 3K plus views. I put zero dollars behind this piece of content. And it's giving me amazing publicity. It is crazy. It gave me like lead generation. And this one gained almost 100 likes and five retweets. It's pretty good. Uh, about 10 seconds video. And uh, oh, actually, this lady who just reached out to me, and she, uh, can you go to the next one? So she actually works for HubSpot. And how she discovered me is actually through my video content, right? And she discovered me, and she wants to interview me to, uh, for one of their Twitter courses. Oh, yeah, this is my prediction. Last year, I made the prediction that LinkedIn is going to embrace live video content. And duh, this year we have live streaming content. I feel pretty proud of myself. And this is one of my friends, and she's a Goldie Chen, and you should definitely follow her. She's really amazing. She's doing LinkedIn Live. And it's my another friend, Wenyi Sun, and she's also doing LinkedIn Live. It looks very similar to Facebook. And this is how this thing looks like on mobile phone. And I heard, because one of my friends works at LinkedIn, and she told me, you know, on LinkedIn, there's also a LinkedIn group, and live streaming feature is going to be available to people who are using LinkedIn group, which is pretty cool. And uh, even, if, even if you don't have the live streaming feature right now on LinkedIn, don't be very depressed, because you can still do video content. So this is just an example. Uh, look at my face. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> so this is just a video I did, I think, after I booked uh, Seth Golden to be on my show. And I just went on LinkedIn, I did this quick video, native, native video on LinkedIn, and gained, again, 3K views, almost 140 comments. Again, that shows the power of video content. And on LinkedIn video, you can add all those like filters, all those things, just natively. How many of you are using LinkedIn video? Nobody? OK, more homework. So, and there's another app I really want, uh, I really highly, highly, highly recommend. It's called InShot. You, you use InShot? Yeah, I love InShot. And you can see, you can add a nice background, and it's really good. So I recommend that, yeah. And again, when I do video, the engagement is really high. People really take the time to write comments. You see, this person wrote so much content. So in summary, I know I ran over time, didn't have much time for Q&A. So today we discussed, I really hope I inspired you to embrace live streaming. We learned how the algorithms are promoting live video content, and live streaming leads to better engagement. But the true reason why you really want to think about this, why people love live streaming so much. What, why? Why do people love? live streaming content so much compared to other types of content. More, yes, more interactive, more authentic, right? You also uh, embrace this vulnerability, vulnerability. And uh, there are times when I went live, I was crying, I don't know, 
Like I'm just me. Like the way you see me online is the way you see me offline. That is true authenticity. I think people in this day and age, in this day and age, consumers, we are tired of fake content, fake influencers, everything fake, right? So that's why live streaming is very hard to fake it when you are going live. That's why those are the two reasons. It's relatable, humanize who you are, authentic. Interactive, and at the same time, when you are going live, it's not just about you talking about you. We don't just want to hear about you talking about you, and the audience also want to have a say in whatever you are doing. It is interactive, collaborative, and you are actually co-creating content. And to, you can just quickly click, yeah. So this is again from Social Media Examiner. I think. You know the reason that live streaming, like, or social media, the way we use social media is to really cultivate this sense of relationships and communities. It's not just about sharing content, but the connections we are creating. And as I mentioned, you know, in this day and age, content shock without relationship goes nowhere. So this actually is one of my favorite book, which just came out this year. Mark Schaefer. How many of you follow Mark Schaefer? Okay. Again, you need to follow him. And this is a book he just released this year. It's called Marketing Rebellion. Okay. I highly recommend. So read this quote, right? So I cannot right discuss this. So let's end that with this. You know, this is one of my favorite quotes from Steve Jobs. And the most powerful person in the room are storytellers, and live streaming video content really allows us to share our story in a very human way. So I hope I have inspired you to go out and start producing your stories and to by using live streaming and video content. So thank you so much.